My eight-year-old son had just finished reciting the four questions at our Passover Seder. Why is this night different than all other nights? As we set about answering him from our Passover prayer book, the Haggadah, no one suspected that beyond the consumption of only unleavened breads and the eating of bitter herbs, the most accurate answer to his question may have been, on this night, your father will discover that he may have developed cancer when he attended Beverly Hills High School 30 years ago. Yet minutes later, a phone call from my sister in Los Angeles brought us this most unexpected news. Erin Brockovich is suing Beverly Hills High because the alumni got cancer from the oil wells. My sister is not the kind of person to say hello at the beginning of a phone conversation. <laughs> Uh, uh, of course she is. What are you talking about? I just saw it on TV, Mike. All these kids are sick. Wait, you mean the real Erin Brockovich as, as in the movie? Yeah. You need to go find out what's going on. The next day I called Brockovich's law firm, Masri and Vitato, and learned that 500 former students with cancers, many who had been athletes, were alleging that N-hexane and toxic benzene had leaked from the oil wells and provoked a cancer cluster. My own cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, or NHL, had been discovered two years earlier, and my doctors had no explanation for it. The subject of high school never even entered the speculation, though if anyone had asked me, I might have mentioned a certain type of moral cancer that had poisoned me as a youth. For a time, I lived in a toxic mix of affluence, decadence, and insufficient parental supervision. In 1974, my father accepted a job at a Los Angeles department store and moved us to a house about $2 million south of where all the movie stars lived. <laughs> I had a Brooklyn accent, a pitiful allowance, and no driver's license. For a self-conscious adolescent in a status-obsessed town like Beverly Hills, my new life was purgatory. I had a desperate need to fit in. I vividly recall the oil wells because they were situated right next to the campus athletic field where I played football. Poorly. And ran track. Slowly. My mother always used to say, Rich or poor, it's better to be rich. <laughs> and the wells struck me as a literal embodiment of that maxim. I listened to details of the lawsuit on the phone and I felt ambivalent. If it were true that somehow the wells had leaked toxins and this did correlate to my illness, would I be happy, relieved, angry? Cancer has a funny way of forcing you to accept your mortality, and once this has taken hold, it's difficult to return to the murky, psychic terrain of blame. Survival depends upon a certain degree of acceptance, self-forgiveness, and banishment of self-pity, and for now, I'm a survivor. Cancer has been good and bad to me, especially because I'm lucky enough to be around to ponder it. In the Passover story, when Pharaoh freed the Jews, they were left to wander in the desert for 40 years. The price of their freedom was in part the acceptance that their lives were a mixture of self-knowledge, doubt, and insufficient vindication. As much as I want to know how lymphoma found its way inside me, the idea has already reignited my childhood feelings of vulnerability. My destiny may have been etched before I could see beyond the chalk-marked finish line of my youthful dreams, but my internal cancer Haggadah reminds me never to feel sorry for myself. I want to know the truth about the oil wells, but I'm afraid it will overtake the peace that I've made with my illness. As Faulkner once wrote, memory believes before knowing remembers. After I hung up with my sister, I paced my apartment. The next thing I knew, I was mimicking the giant strides of my former track event, the high hurdles. How nervous I'd be before the start of each race. Then I thought the cure for fear was the elimination of fear. But now I know better. The cure is courage in the face of fear. So by the end of the following night, a night that by most measures was no different than any other, I decided to become a plaintiff in the lawsuit and to try to learn the truth.